Hey guys, I'm going to test your Steve Reeves knowledge in this video. Yesterday, I posted a photo of a mysterious young woman here on my YouTube feed, on Twitter, and on my Instagram story. So I asked you if you knew who this mysterious woman was and what her relationship to Steve Reeves may have been. And no one on Twitter, no one on Instagram, and no one on my YouTube feed guessed it except for YouTube user Ivos Smart TV. And I apologize to him, but I had to remove his answer in the comments before I got this video up. I never dreamed in a thousand years that somebody would guess it. So man, Ivos Smart TV, you are on top of it. Let's back up for a second. We know, of course, that Steve won the AAU Mr. America title on June 29th, 1947, which was held in Chicago. 1947 was a big year for Steve. What else, though, was going on in his life? Was he pursuing acting yet? Did he have a girlfriend? At the Mr. America contest, after he was announced as the winner, he received a letter from the Wallace Downey Talent Agency in New York inquiring if Steve was interested in pursuing an acting career, and if so, the Wallace Downey Agency from New York would be interested in getting things, quote unquote, rolling for you. Steve signed with the Downey Talent Agency and arrived in New York on September 22nd, 1947. That was about three months to the day after winning the Mr. America title. The agency rented Steve an apartment right in the middle of New York City and enrolled Steve in acting classes. During this time, he worked out at Sig Klein's gym in New York City, which was also right downtown. He worked out three times a week for an hour and a half each workout. And by the way, this information comes from George Helmer's great book, A Moment in Time, which you can find on the website stevereeves.com. Um, according to A Moment in Time, Steve dated Ginger Gray, and maybe you've seen that picture of Steve with Ginger, who did happen to change her name a couple of times later. And also, he dated Pam Rogers. But who else might he have dated? Well, how about the name Jane Keene? Does that sound familiar? Well, that's the mysterious woman that I posted a picture of yesterday on Twitter, Instagram, and on my YouTube feed. Well, her name didn't sound uh, familiar to me either when I stumbled upon it, so I wanted to know more about her. According to the Toledo Blade newspaper of October 3rd, 1947, Steve was romancing Jane Keene. So this would be less than two weeks after having arrived in New York. He arrived in New York in late September. And here we are, October 3rd. It's being reported in a newspaper, kind of a gossip column a syndicated gossip column that newspapers around the United States would, would get. So romancing, what does that mean? It could just mean they were friends and they were seen out on the town in New York and then assumed to be dating or something. Or it could mean that they were actually romantic. Maybe they were seen holding hands, hugging. There's no pictures of the two of them together. So really all we have to go on is the time frame. They're both attractive people. They were both in New York at that time. And let's learn a little bit more about Jane Keene. According to Wikipedia, she was born April 10th, 1923. So this was 1947. It would have made her three years older than Steve. So Steve, in 1947, he was 20, 21. He was born in 1926. So 1947, he would be 21 and she was three years older, so she would be 24 years old at that time. 
Jane was an American actress and singer whose career in show business spanned seven decades and included appearing in nightclubs, on recordings, and in radio, television, Broadway, and films. And among her most famous roles was playing Trixie Norton on the Jackie Gleason show from 1966 to 1970. She worked the nightclub circuit through the 40s and 50s. So maybe this is where she met Steve on the nightclub circuit. She appeared in starring roles on Broadway in the 1950s. She studied acting with Stanford Meisner at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York. Once again, there's another opportunity for all these actors and actresses to come together and meet each other. In 1939, when actor Gregory Peck enrolled in that same acting school, there were approximately 90 students at the school. That was in 1939. So this school had quite the reputation. Other alumni included Robert Duvall, James Kahn, Carol Channing, Diane Keaton, Grace Kelly, and many, many other famous names. Flying with Music is a 1942 American musical film that Jane was in. Other credits include appearances on the Phil Silvers show, Make Room for Daddy, The Lucy Show, Love American Style, I used to love that show, The Love Boat, also love that show, The Facts of Life, and Dallas. Keen was married to director and producer Dick Linkroom from 1962 to 1969, and then to actor-producer Joe Hecht from 1970 until his death in 2005. So she married her first husband in 1962. So she stayed single for quite a while, 15 years after she and Steve were quote-unquote romancing. Jane Keene had no children, but she was survived by her stepson, her niece, and their respective families. Keene died on November 26th. Today is November 28th. She died in 2013, so eight years ago. Today is November 28th, 2021. She died on November 26, 2013, so about eight years ago to the day she passed away at age 90 at Providence Street Joseph Medical Center in Burbank, California of complications from a fall. So to wrap up, here's another snapshot of Steve's life from late 1947. And once again, whether it's your favorite music band, your favorite author, a distant relative, or Steve Reeves, it's interesting to be able to piece together parts of their lives that were previously unknown. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your support. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and for even more in-depth, behind-the-scenes Steve Reeves material, you can support my work at Buy Me A Coffee. The link is below this and all of my videos. At Buy Me A Coffee, or as I call it, Buy Me A Protein Drink or two, you will have instant access to bonus material, stuff that you won't see anywhere else, including on Instagram, including on YouTube, behind the scenes stories that I've recently discovered from people that actually knew Steve, extra commentary to some of these videos, including the Pat Henry video, pictures of Steve that have never been posted before, and an opportunity to find out what is next. What am I going to do next with the Steve Reeves memorabilia, this YouTube channel? Now you may be thinking, but Scott, you have all of this Steve Reeves memorabilia. Why do you need support for your work? Well, that's a great question. Yes, you are right. But think of the memorabilia as a museum. And there are costs to maintain these valuable items, to store them in storage facilities. 
the maintenance on the Jaguar XJS that belonged to Steve is definitely a factor. So your support will help preserve history, bodybuilding history, and ensure that I can continue to spend as much time as I have been on these videos, Twitter posts, Instagram posts, and more. Look, I've got big plans, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. And so just like you would your favorite museum, like for instance, the Stark Museum here in Austin, Texas, Joe and Betty Weeder are big supporters of that museum. And that stuff in the museum, that memorabilia, with their help and with the other supporters, will be able to be maintained properly. So that's what I'm looking for. So thank you for your consideration, your personal messages, your friendships, that I have begun emails, phone conversations, and feedback. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, take care of yourself. And Ivo Smart TV, good job once again guessing who the mysterious woman was, Jane Keen. Talk to you later, guys. Mm -hmm.